Well, it is World Malaria Day. African countries, of course, we continue to shoulder a disproportionately high share, I would argue, of the global burden of the disease. Now, there's a lot of advances made in the prevention and treatment, uh, but still millions of lives are at risk uh, owing to barriers that include, and this is always the biggest talking point, is the cost of health care, anti-malarial drug resistance, inadequate funding for research, and limited access to preventative measures. Well, Chief Investigator in Malaria Biology at H3D at the University of Cape Town is Dr. T Dale Taylor uh, making time for us this morning. Dr. Taylor, good morning. I really do appreciate uh, your time and I cannot help but uh, believe we need to talk about World Malaria Day off the back of COVID-19 and I'm sure you're tired of this conversation but when it was COVID-19 and the height of that, it's as though we forgot about every other disease on the planet. It does certainly seem like that. Good morning, Gareth, and good morning to your listeners. It is indeed World Malaria Day. Uh, it's also, just to, to mention for our, our colleagues here in the Human Genome Department, uh, it is also World Genome Day. 25 years ago today was the publication of the human DNA sequence. So it certainly is a big day for, for science uh, worldwide today. World Genome Day. I think I'm going to get one of uh, the other shows, maybe Tamela Motatuana, to talk about World Genome Day. That's fascinating. But for now, malaria, why is it in 2023 when we're able to fight global pandemics? We're opening up uh, healthcare facilities in just about every part of the world, every country, every state, every nation. Are we not able to get on top of malaria? What do you think the problem is? Well, that's, uh, that's uh, been a problem for a very long time. It is estimated that probably in the history of humankind, more than half of the people who have ever lived have died from malaria. So it's been something which has been with us for hundreds of thousands of years. Um, big problems for us currently are, you know, a lack of drugs in the, uh, available on the market. Um, the, the other big problem is that many of the cases are out in the rural areas. Just simply getting, getting drugs and, and resources to these people is a logistical nightmare. Uh, and uh, as you've mentioned already, you know, that given the other, other things that are happening in the world currently, things like COVID have really mm -hmm. hit the malaria budgets and, and global health budgets generally. It's uh, certainly put a big strain on things. Yeah, it certainly has. It's as though it's the same sort of discussion we've been having about TB, uh, Dr. Taylor, is also one of those uh, issues that were forgotten about during COVID-19, but a big focus back on TB after COVID-19. Well, not after COVID-19. It's not gone, of course, uh, but when the focus moved away from COVID-19. So why is it so difficult if this has killed as many people uh, historically as you say it has, and I'm sure that research supports that, why is it so hard to get as much money as you could possibly need? Everyone seems to know the danger, but uh, you don't seem to get the support you need. So the, the big problem is, you know, drug research is expensive. Um, it costs about a billion dollars to get a new drug onto the market. Uh, somebody has to find that money. And if there's no way to, to recoup that investment, then, you know, the, the drugs fall into, uh, rather the disease areas fall into what we refer to as neglected diseases. And these are things like uh, malaria, dengue fever, bilharzia, all the ones which affect developing nations more than developed nations. So it simply is a case of nobody wants to, to put up the money to, to carry on the fight. Mm, it uh, always comes down to money in the end, uh, doesn't it, Doctor? But I'm curious as well, when we talk about anti-malarial drug resistance, help me, help me unpack that. Add some, add some meat to the bone for me, because if it's been around this long, is it because malaria is, is, is it mutating? Is it changing? Are humans changing? What's happening there? Why are we building up a resistance? So it's a bit of everything. Uh, we know that basically resistance to all antibiotics will occur eventually. It's happened with any antibiotic you can think of, penicillin, uh, all the tetracyclines, anything you might take for almost anything. And antimalarials are, are, are no different. So basically drugs you know, are, are produced, they go out into the wild, we use them for a very long time, and then at some point they stop working because the parasite does mutate. Uh, you know, resistance become, uh, uh, rather populations become resistant to the drugs we end up falling out of the therapeutic window. So you need more and more drug to get the job done and eventually the, the drug just stops working. And this will happen throughout. Uh, it happens mm. with HIV, it happens with TB, you name it, we get it. So this is nothing that's new to us. We've just got to keep the, the pipeline fed with new drugs coming up so we can try to mitigate the resistance as much as possible by always having something available, something else we can use. So we don't overuse any one drug. 
Uh, so I imagine that's where the issue of inadequate funding for research comes in. But as you say, almost a billion rand. Did you say a billion rand or a billion dollars to get a new drug? A billion dollars. A billion dollars. So there we go. There's the problem. So as it yeah. mutates, as it changes with every other disease in the world, uh, you've got to keep getting the money to do the research to keep changing the, uh, the, mac the vaccine and the medicine for the disease. I imagine then, doctor, that we are going to start picking up, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, a huge disparity between the fight against malaria in first world countries and the fight against malaria in third world countries. Here in Africa, we rely on simple basics like mosquito nets, but I can't imagine that's the most effective way, is it? You'd be surprised, actually. Um, so basically, the first world managed to get rid of the malaria many years ago with very aggressive um, insecticide campaigns with DDT and things like that. So in huge parts of Europe, in North America, Australia, there is no malaria anymore. They wiped it out. Uh, we still have, obviously, a, a huge amount of it. 90% of the cases are here in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, but certainly, drugs are not the only option. You know, we, we need to carry on with things like uh, bed nets. Bed nets work brilliantly to protect people while they sleep from mosquitoes. Um, we do have, uh, throughout Africa, a really good residual insecticide spraying program, where inside of houses and, and shops and other buildings are sprayed down with insecticides to kill the mosquitoes. It's a really, really important intervention. That's something that, that we've been pushing very aggressively for the last mm. 30 years, and which is, has reached huge dividends. Um, likewise, you know, simple things like uh, wearing protective clothing, making sure you don't go out after dark without long sleeves on. Little things like that all help significantly in the fight against malaria, and these are well known amongst the, the populations who are at risk. So yeah, certainly it's, it's not all about the drugs. There are plenty of interventions we, we, we rely on to keep which I'm, malaria under control. Which I'm sure are actually easier uh, to do as well. I don't know why, as you mentioned the uh, mosquito nets, part of me thinks of Kingsley Holgate, uh, the, the very well-known adventurer. It was him and his son, sure. if I'm not mistaken. I think it was the beginning of this year, I did an interview uh, with them, and they were doing one of their, their Land Rover expeditions delivering mosquito nets uh, in malaria areas. So you're absolutely right, Doctor. I'm going to leave this as a last question to you. Imagine the most important minister in government is listening to you and I talk right now. What what do you need from them? What do you want to tell them that they need to do to make your job easier and to get on top of malaria? What's, or what's the call to government or whoever it is that you need to speak to to make this a reality and take the fight forward? Well, it's uh, perhaps, as you've mentioned already, we're going to be asking for a little bit more funding. You know, the South African government has been very proactive in looking after malaria. Uh, we, we have significant amounts of funding through the Medical Research Council, through the Technology Innovation Agency to support our efforts. But the drug discovery pipeline is a very long and slow process. It takes about between 10 and 13 years from when we first start working on a drug to when it gets into the market. And we need support throughout that time. Uh, at the end of the day, we've got to find the money to get the drug out of the lab and into the clinic. That costs even more money, and, and you know, the support is always going to be important. So ministers, please, you know, keep funding science, keep funding research. It's not only about malaria. You know, we've mentioned TB this morning. We've mentioned dengue fever this morning. There are a lot of illnesses out there which affect mostly us here in Africa, and we really, we're the ones who have to be involved in sorting it out. So really, that's the way to go. That's the way to go forward. That's the way forward. Uh, Dr. Dale Taylor, thank you very much. Congratulations to you uh, and your team. I hope this is not a conversation that only happens on the 25th of April. Hopefully, because of what you've said, we can take this conversation forward. Chief Investigator in Malaria Biology at H3D at the University of uh, Cape Town, Dr. Dale Taylor, joining us on what is World uh, Malaria Day. But as the good doc says, it's also World Genome Day as well. Why is that important? DNA. Uh, deoxyribose nucleic acid. Why is that important? Uh, we'll talk about that, I'm sure, later in the day. We're heading up a 